Who's got a question about the title, you explore? You don't want me to move. Is it okay? Yeah, it's fine. Uh, um, I'm moving a lot. <laughs> blur. Blur is what you see every day. Everything you see is blurred. Do you believe me? Is it natural for you to think you see blurred? No. Okay, and you see blurred and gray. We talk about it. And the user, when he sees one of your wonderful interface, is deciding what he will do with your interface in blur and gray. I'm sure you don't believe me because it's not natural for a human being to imagine the world in gray and blur, but this is true. This is how our eyes are working. I'm Yves Kukuk, um, leading company whose name is uh, Labo Internet, and we only work in user experience. We don't talk about design we never decide for colors, styles, and so on. We only help people understand the users. Uh, I was working on the web since uh, this first navigator I had. <laughs> it was quite good. So this is a French newspaper page, web page. And this is what you see. You see colors, you see a picture, you see faces. In fact, you have your web page, you have the picture on your brain, but this picture on your brain doesn't come directly from the interface. It comes through the eyes. Am I wrong? And it be begins like this. It's great and birds. This is what you see, really. I love this moment because nobody believes me. He is crazy what I'm doing here. Let me try to explain. Your eye is a wonderful optical system and a nervous system. On the back of the eye is the nervous system, on the front of the, your eye is an optical system. We won't speak about the optical system. But all the back of your eyes is covered with cells, and those cells have special skills. Those skills are to decode shapes, colors, but most of the back of your eyes is the retina, and it is made of roads, road cells. Those cells are very sensitive to light, very sensitive to anything that moves, but are not able to decode colors. They only see gray levels. Only gray levels. And it has a very wide angle because it doesn't care of the optical system. Uh, this cell can see something here, this cell can see something here. Close from 180 degrees, but no colors. And this is what sees your retina. It's a bad point for, uh, for the Apple marketing, you know, retina. So. Okay. But anyway, and you have. In your memory, who's not driving here? You're all driving cars. You're driving your car, someone is passing you and looking at you. Just on the side and looking at you. A face is looking at you and you see it. You know it. It's not something like a sixth sense or something. No, it's only your eye. Any face turning to you, you know it. You just no, there is a face. You see there is a face watching you. Whatever you do thereafter is another thing. You, you turn your face to see the person or you don't, but you know someone is watching you. It is because when we uh, stood up in the savanna uh, thousands of years ago to survive, we had to know if someone, if any face, something with eyes and teeth is going to eat me or if it's food for me, I can try to catch it and, and then survive. It is only a question of s surviving. Okay? And even in this blurred and gray context, I can identify faces. Always. Just to survive. The other part of the eye, it's a very, very tiny spot here. Fovea. 
for the R is less than 1% of our cells. And very low angle, 2 to 4 degrees. 4 degrees is for very, very high level skills, uh, for the L skills. It is sensitive to colors. It is uh, composed of cones, conical cells, and it needs light. When you have no light, you have no color. When you're in the dark, you should see shades. Your paraphernalia, your roads, can see things in the dark, close dark, but no colors. It needs a lot of light. And because it is small, and because it is just in front of the optical system of the eye, it is a very small angle of vision, tiny angle of vision. So, what you see is gray and blurred. I see you smiling, perhaps because this face. <laughs> it's possible. But anyway, what you first discover in the page is gray, blurred, and you immediately go on the face, if there is a face. If there are many faces, the odds are equals for any face on the interface. Because you have to know if this face is going to beat you or if you are going to beat this face. No matter about this one. <laughs> okay? And I'm going to try to prove it in a few slides. So, the visual angles are paraphoral. You see really on, on the sides of your, of your face. And for VR, you see colors, but in a very, very small spot in front of you. So from 0 to 0 0.3 seconds, a third of a second, you have absolutely no idea what are the colors here. But your brain tells you there are colors. And the first colors you know from this interface comes not from your eyes, but your imagination. And then, until one and a half seconds, your eyes is scanning the page, having spots, deciding colors. And all the question we will ask today is, why does the eye go to these points and not to other points? How does it decide? decide? Sorry for my English. I live in the south of France and I have many accents before I speak English. It's really good. Don't worry, don't worry. Uh, it's it's better for... Sorry? It will work out. Okay. Very kind of you. <laughs> so, it's a little bit long, sorry. What does the eye, the brain says, the eye, go there, go there, go there, and tell me what it is. Sharpened, clear, and colored. So, each point you gaze at, you look at, is a fixation. The the succession of fixations is a saccade. We, we say it as a saccade. And what comes from fovea and is clear is foveal vision. When we say foveal vision, it's small parts of a picture, but very clear and in color. And all the rest, blurred and gray, is parafoveal. But you still don't believe me. I thank you for staying here, but you still don't <laughs> believe me. So we will take an example, a very simple one. You will have a, a little uh, air cross in the middle of the screen. And please be very focused on it, on the middle of it. And don't move your eyes. Because the natural state of your eyes is to move and try to see what's around. And I'd like you to stay focused on the center of this cross. Will you? you. Don't move your eyes. So you can move your eyes. What did you see? Something around here. Mm. Nothing more. And what was around? Nothing. Blurred and gray. Oh my God. If you don't move your eyes, you see one part of the picture and not the rest. The rest is blurred and gray. So, for those who were close, certainly something 
like this, for those in the back of the room, this, and those who cheated a little bit <laughs> were certainly there around. But if you stay focused there, you don't see anything around except gray and blurred. This is your eye. It's not able to do something else. Let's have another try, please. I'd like you to be more focused. I saw some of you have some movements. Please don't. Try to be very well focused. It will be a little bit longer. Please, go on. Are you, are you really focused? I'd like you to notice that you didn't see that color had changed here and here and here. No. Because your peripheral vision cannot see colors changes. It doesn't see colors. Do you begin to believe what I told you? OK, let's have another try. And it's not a problem of yours. It is human beings. A little bit longer, but less fun. You saw something there. Yeah, yeah movement. Yeah. Yeah. Moving. Movement and faces mm -hmm. to survive. The peripheral vision is absolutely adapted to know any movement and faces. And snakes. But we don't really care of snakes in the web. But faces and movements. Okay? So, meanwhile, your brain says you see a perfect colored picture. When you see a website, it is colored. It's not black and white. It is not gray. It's not blurred. So how does your brain create these colors? <coughs> your brain, in fact, is trying to organize to be the closest to the reality. But before you know the reality, you have to know something. So your brain tells your eyes to go to some places on the picture you see or the web, screen, the, the web uh, site or the screen you see. It tells your eyes to go there and go there and go there to know what it is. Because I suppose it is something. And tell me it is true what I imagine it is. So, it, it, it tries to get a real picture using the peripheral structure, what we see in the peripheral, we'll, we'll see, I have details on it. Eye movement, telling the eye to move, and memory. Most of the picture comes from the memory. S stay looking at me, please. There is a chair, a special chair, backward. What is its color? I know because I can see it, but you don't. Because you've seen it, you know it, but you, you haven't seen it, really. It is the same that you have, but you don't know. <laughs> okay? Another point is... <laughs> sorry, what? She <laughs> just shaked. <laughs> I promise you the chair. <laughs> so the other point is, you saw that... Uh, we are going to see faces, movements, and faces. In fact, we are going to see some different things. I'd like you to just to, to see where does your eyes go first. Not the second point, or so, the first case you have on the picture. OK? Obvious? Obvious? There's no color, but obvious. Is it obvious? Mm -hmm. Yes? Is it? No? Yes. Madam, is it obvious here? Yes. The first one? Is it obvious? No. no. In fact, your eyes is going to what is face, danger, potential danger, or different. Mm -hmm. But if there are many differences, which one? No one knows. 
out. Your first gaze was no. The first memorized gaze is the end for 80, 85 percent of the persons. But the first gaze was for the face, even if it's not easy to see it. And you saw the hands, and I will prove it to you. You saw the hands because you saw the face, and the face is watching the hands. In advertisements, if you want to, to sell a shampoo, it's not because you, you put a nude lady, naked lady, it's because the naked lady is watching the shampoo. If she doesn't watch the shampoo, you don't sell shampoo, you just sell naked lady. It's not a good market, I think. <laughs> Depends. <laughs> <laughs> so, if we see them in blurred and braids, it was because it was different, not because it was red. This one, okay, it's different. This one is different. This one, it is different, but uh, about 40, 45 percent of persons should watch here because it is different too. And this is not a face. This is a human being, certainly, but this is not a face. And here, there are two differences, or three differences. There's no way to know where the first gaze will be. There's a human being, and certainly a face. We don't see the face, but there is certainly a face. This is the first gaze. And here, you don't see the hands. You see the face. You can discover the face first. You, what you have to know is what you really see is this, and your decision is there is a face, but the face is somewhere there. So what it is? So your first case was certainly there, but what you, what founded your decision was the face. You get it? So this is a focal point. This is what we call a focal point. This is where the, the first case is on a page. If your page is very complex and you have many possible focal points, you don't know where the user will begin his reading of your page. And if you have one difference, you know it will begin there and then you can make a track to know what, what will be uh, read after. The other point is we are very lazy and we begin from the focal point our eyes can transmit to the brain at topmost 15, about 15 pictures per second, not more. Not the foveal, parafoveal uh, vision. It is a, a, a mainstream. Uh, um, th there is no pictures. It's, a, it's always updated. But the saccade, saccadic movement, it is at topmost 15. Most of us, it's about 10 points, 10 gazes per second. And it is uh, energy costing to, to, to move the eyes. So my first gaze is somewhere which is the focal point. And then the, the longest distance the distance is, the lower fixation I will have. So if the focal point is here, around here I can have to tw 12 to 15 gazes. 7 to 11 here, and at the other side of the website, I will have only 2, 3, 4, 5 gazes per second. So I try to optimize and discover things around here, because I don't want to be tired with the website. Okay? The eye, in fact, physically, it can be oriented from uh, 15 to 20, 21 degrees on each side. You know why we have containers in bootstrap? Yeah, containers. Not the container fluid, but container. About 1,000 pixel wide. Because if you have a big screen and a big container, your eyes is not enough to go on the, on the both sides. And what you have to do is to move your hand. Your head, sorry. And it is 1,000 more expensive in energy. If you look at Facebook, who doesn't know Facebook? 
I don't know Facebook <laughs> much really. If you look at Facebook, you have three working areas. And it's getting the full screen on most of the, the version of the interface. It is getting the full screen, but you turn your head and you work on the place. And then you turn your head and you work on the place. And then you turn your head and you work on the other place. There are different kind of activities for each area. But each area, your eyes just have to move. You don't have to. I'm so sorry. Um, didn't tell it. Um, you don't have to move your eyes. You, you, you don't have to move your head to, to, to work in one area of activity. And why Bootstrap use something like around 1,000 pixel wide area? It is just because of this. Because if you have to go away, it's very expensive in terms of energy. And people don't know that they have to move their head. They're just tired about your website and they leave. They don't say, oh, it's not a bad, de it's a really bad design, I have to move my head. No, they say, I don't feel good about it, and they leave. That's all. So, you've all heard about eye tracking. Who didn't? The usual representation of eye tracking is something like this. It is very good for marketing to say, look, we are doing eye tracking. This is very bad for um, UX practitioners or for designers because it shows you what the user don't see and hides what the user see. It's not a very good representation of the reality. And the other one is um, you don't have the, the, the tempo, the time spent on things. So what we use most of the time is real-time video. This is a Nielsen video. And you see this little spot there? It is the case. Where is the eye? You see it has absolutely nothing to do with the mouse. So don't try to track clicks or mouse position. It doesn't mean what, what people are looking at. <coughs> and another point, when the, the spot grows, it means the gaze stays fixed on one, one place. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean more attention. Usually it means the user is lost. And so, what do I do next? Can you see what it was for? This eye tracking? It is a Microsoft eye tracking. Pop up blocks. Mm -hmm. And they had thousands and thousands of users testing this, and nobody saw the pop up blocks, so you can't have the information you were asking for. Is it okay for eye tracking? So, to discover an interface, the brain has only paraphoral information. First, it sees paraphoral information. And it has to organize, because if you wanted to seek everything on a web page, it should take about four minutes. Four minutes to see every dotted colors. And the other problem is, at the end of the four minutes, you don't remember the beginning. Mm -hmm. So it's absolutely useless. So it's working on contrast blocks. What are the visual blocks? And do they have a meaning? And position. And the brain is trying to establish a conceptual cartography. This is navigation. This is ads. This is what I'm looking for, trying to uh, make concepts about those forms, those shapes. And guessing, it, it is guessing, always guessing. In fact, our, our brain is guessing colors, guessing position, guessing the role of an uh, object on the page, and so on. If we see this page, the brain will certainly, and we have many, many eye trackings that demonstrate that, say, okay, this is the title, this is navigation. This is something I will perhaps look at. This is useless, useless. Because it was looking like an ad, if I go back. And this happens in less than half a second. I have a cartography and say, this is what I will look at, and this is what I will not look at. And there is a face. First, 
case on the face. What is left after all those uh, elements were discovered? It is what we call the significance area. I will look in the significance area. And if what I'm looking for is not in the significant area, I will live. I will not explore the rest of the website. I'd like to show you another little video. It is a, a website, an old website, uh, in which people were asked to organize a weekend in London. It was in France. And they were asked to, to organize a weekend in London. And the, the test subject said, uh, if you realize this task in less than one minute, you will win the weekend. So go on, go. They were stressed about it. But there were a very easy way to win the test. There were big, about 25% uh, of the, 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 the horizontal size of the website, blinking blue button, Weekend to London, click here, and it was done. Did they see it? No. Because in the, the, the map, the, the brain's map, it was an ad. And I'm focused on the fact I want to win this weekend, so I have to do the task. They didn't see the ad. This is what we call banner blindness. If you put an advertisement on a website anywhere, and it looks like an advertisement, about 15 to 80 percent of the person will look at it. The other, they will not. It's not they say, I don't like ads. They don't even look at it. That's it. On the top, on the bottom, sorry, you will see the broad face of the person. They have to do the task here. And you can just click here, it's done. But you see the eye, the eye movement? Mm -hmm. no, there's absolutely no eye movement here. Because it, on the map, on the brain's map, it says, no, this is an ad. I'm losing my time with this. There were 143 participants to this test. Only two clicked on the button. Two. Amazing, no? This is the web. You know the song? This is the web. Banner blindness. It's not a theory, it's a fact. When you map, you exclude things. You don't try to include, you try to exclude to go faster. They all went to London. There were no times. They were going to London. But uh, we have to stress them. Because if they have time to take, take the time to look at the screen, they should have seen it. Meanwhile, I'm certain, each of us is absolutely certain, that I know what's on the web page I'm saying. I know it. And in fact, it's not true. We don't know. With something like Jon Snow, we know nothing about the web page, even if it's our web page. Okay, three seconds is usually sufficient to remember everything on the web page. There are many courses on the, on the design. Say, on three seconds, you got it. You got the big picture. Let's check that. What was this? The title. You remember it? Even if it's in French, but I do it with New York Times, it's the same. You don't exactly remember what it was. This look, what is this? Ads, a list, an article? No, it's a list. <laughs> but you were sure you knew it. And we saw it, we saw it night time. And this one. This is an ad. 
<laughs> as it is in French, and with French print, I won't ask you for the, the partners, but, yeah. but we don't know things. We don't remember what they are. And there is no pictorial vision. It doesn't exist. We will see that. And, and add articles, a list. Articles. articles. How many pictures? And the other one? Sorry? It's the same. Yeah. You memorized it. Because there is a symmetry. So you say, oh, this is easy to know. And there's another reason. Significant area. This is where I'm going to look at. And this. And that, yeah. Now stati statistically, you, you know the pace. So the odds are better and better. And this is? Title, an ad, another ad? Yeah, yeah it, in fact, it is really sadistic for me because it is not possible to know. The only thing you know is the face you saw at the beginning and you don't even remember what was the context of this face. Because you didn't have time to, to look around and see what it was. Okay, where does it come from? I'm lucky I got the, this ball. I have another one in my bag, but I will use this one. So, you know what is predictive memory? No? Could you please catch the ball and play with the other Go on. Oh, no, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> Austin person was going outside. No. Thank you. It's ballistics. This curves. You, you know it's ballistics. <coughs> you catch the ball, it's ballistics. It's wonderful ballistics, you know? This curves and so on. This is a formula. <laughs> Did you compute that? No, Did you? Not consciously. Really? This should. There's a little bit of Einstein for the energy and a little bit of Newton for the fall down. Well, in fact, no, absolutely not. What you computed is this. Remember. And what's happening is, when I, when I throw the ball, you have on your memory something like an equivalent ball. And first of all, you have confidence. But if I don't do that before, I did this. You didn't even notice, but I did this. I had to do it. And I did this to let you know what it was about. You know what is the, the pétanque in the south of France? Can you imagine it as a bull of pétanque? <laughs> if I sell it, if I throw it, you don't try to catch it, you, you jump. <laughs> <laughs> and the symbols are very important because in our culture, I do this and I do this and it's okay for you. It's not heavy, it's not dangerous, I'm playing. I did it in China, in, in Nanjing, a few months ago. Well, no, it's more than one year ago. And I throw the ball like this, I did the same. But these symbols, means nothing for Chinese people. It doesn't say this is not heavy, this is not dangerous. So I threw it, there were about a thousand persons there, and they all poof, jumped away. Security went to, on, on the, 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 the estrade, I don't know, uh, on the stage, because I swear I was a dangerous guy. I, okay, this is not dangerous. But this comes from your memory. This doesn't come from a computation. You don't compute in real time. You just stick on memory. And it looks like, the curve looks like, and I will be on the position to, to go. The way you see colors on a web page is exactly the, the same. You predict what will be the colors coming from your memory. <coughs> uh, 
And what is interesting, and why does it work like this? Because going in my memory is a million times faster than moving my eyes. I can move my eyes at topmost five times, have a gaze five times a second. In my memory, I can have uh, two movies, full movies in one second. It's very, very fast. And the brain is trying to optimize depending on what it is looking for. This is a very, very this is one of the first, one of the first eye tracking that ever happened. It was in 1967 uh, from Yarbus, a Russian psychologist, and he was showing a picture, a traditional um, uh, 19th century uh, Russian picture, and asking people, how old are the persons? This was the eye tracking. The eye tracking was not as uh, uh, sharp as, as we have now. But this was the eye tracking, looking for the faces. Because I'm asking an age, what will be signs of the age faces? But if we have the question, how long was the visitor, visitor gone? Gone, time, walking, coming out, coming in, and so on. So the eye tracking was, OK, the shoes. Even one was looking for a clock somewhere. Because conceptually, the time, where is the time? So we don't look the same thing depending on what we're looking at, what we are waiting for. What were they doing? Doing is what? What are we doing with the ants? Mm -hmm. So what were they doing? They will look at the ants. The brain has a question and organize the gaze, the second movement, to try to find an answer. So the brain is trying to discover the reality. And when it doesn't really discover the reality, it adds things that doesn't exist, because it's easier. Is it OK? I exist. You can add me. <laughs> Do you see the dog? Who cannot see the dog? Here's the head. One foot, one foot. The dog is here. A dog. A dog. I was duck. Quack, quack. OK, that's OK. Now I see the dog. <laughs> I, I will try again, but I didn't see the duck. <laughs> <laughs> but you give me an idea for the next one, I will. <laughs> Can you see the duck? OK, you see the duck now. Do you? OK. Do they look in columns or lines? What is your first ID? We go there on your first ID. First minute. Don't think too much. Let's your brain go. Columns? Yeah, and there are lines. So the first rule, this is uh, the forms psychology, Gestalt psychology. The first rule is proximity. If things are closer, they are together. Second rule, columns, lines. OK. And there? OK, the second rule is similarity. If things are similar, we just group them. Because it's easy for me to organize my brain to say, I have a Z line and an X line and a, or a Z column. OK, mm -hmm. it is easier to organize in my mind. Not to remember, just to organize, to, to use it. Similarity. Be very careful about similarity, because we stuck to the first description in similarity. So the first idea is, OK, this is different. Mm -hmm. In fact, they're all different. They're all very different. Yeah. But we'd say, OK, I found, I found it. Let's do something else. No. <coughs> so if you have a very detailed uh, web page or design, and you think this little detail will make a difference, no. Big details, yeah, this is the difference. Small details, people don't see it. Because they're so different, OK, let's do something else. What do you see? A worm? A worm? No, really, you see three parts of curves. And you, the rest is your brain. You imagine something, Nessie or something. 
because it's not because we are crazy, it's just because it is easier for us to con have a concept in our head. And this one. Coffee. <laughs> no, serpents, health. But it is easier for us to have a concept. So we close ships. We join land. You're welcome. You are grey and blurred, but you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so continuity, we close ships. And this. Yeah. That, that the mind, the virus, uh, we see something, this is not something, these are conical forms. But we try to do something with it because it will be one concept and not many concepts. And this one? You see what you want, you can see a triangle, you can see a circle and so on, but in fact you see three arches of circle. And there, a Pac-Man battle, a triangle. Two yeah, in <laughs> fact, and this one. This is Pac-Man World War. <laughs> yeah, we see things that don't exist because it is easier to have a concept in our mind. In fact, if our mind is not able to make a concept, it doesn't exist in our mind. It cannot use it. Yeah. I, I see something, you put dollars in, you know, for the World Wide Fund. We close shapes because it is easier for us to understand what it is. What do you see? Three, three shapes. In fact, it is, in the other hand, it is one shape and it's easier for you to think about three shapes because a circle, a triangle and a square is better. Something it's a small list of concepts and I can organize with that. So you prefer to see that, which doesn't exist. It was dark shit. So we simplify. We try to reduce things to simple elements. What do you see thereafter? Certainly you should imagine something like this. Because we all play with symmetry. In fact, it is easier to have this shape than the half of the shape. So we try to create symmetry to, to see if there is something I can remember or use in my mind. This one, romantic moment. It's official. <laughs> oh, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> uh, it should be that. For about 65% of the population, for the rest of the population, this this symmetry. Oh, sorry, it doesn't work. This one. Oh, okay. Yeah, it is possible too. I really don't know if those people have a broken heart or no. Uh, <laughs> they see that kind of symmetry. That's all. This is one very very interesting in design. This is the most important fault we have in design. What is the background color, please? Is it red or is it white? Depends. Could be both. It's red. It's white. Top. Exactly. Black on the yeah. Why? Here it is. It's red. And here it is. You know why? Because the background is only where there is less details. The only thing for my vision, if, if it's uh, far, I have less details in the blur and gray, and gray vision. So the background is where there are less details. And when you have a complex background, with a picture and very artist uh, vi vision of it, it comes on the front for the brain. So the background is where there are less details. The other one from the Gestalt, or psychology of forms, is 
the focal point. Perhaps it was not this point for you. Perhaps it was any of the other points, your focal point. But wherever you were looking at the picture, it was always the same. <coughs> and we always begin by something. So good design is just to discover where will people begin. And if you use one face, they will begin here. And then you can have a lecture. You can have a path of reading the pitch. OK? Mm -hmm. So next one is focal point. And the last one is very easy. It's experience. When you have learned how to decode something, you will always know how to decode something. Can you see the dog? Mm -hmm. The dog. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not the same one than the other. Mm -hmm. Experience. The other one was this one. Okay. But this was very interesting because I was looking trying, for a duck. I was looking yeah. for a duck. I could not see the dog. This is really it was not possible it's, for me. It's absolute. Mm -hmm. But I will. I think I will try it. Uh, it's a good exercise. In fact, can you see? No, no, really. Can you see the duck? And nobody will see the duck because they will be looking for a duck. Okay. We're close from the end. The, this is a guy who, who invented this. The Gestalt psychology the psychology of the forms, of the shapes. And this is very important in design. I love this picture. Yeah. What do you see? Old man, a woman. Uh, big Old head. Man. Big and head. the dog. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you have uh, the end and the face of Christian van der Rijnfels, who created it. It was a German guy. Yeah, so what do I recommend to do with this? It's to blow the web. Blur the web is see what people really see. What is this website? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you know it. Yeah. Just so you identify it just by the shapes. Yeah. You're right. And this one. Uh, Jump out. Out. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and this one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you guess the, the next one. What is I guess? What is this? Typo three. No. October. No, October. And this one. Looks like this Apple. one is the best structure for the mind. Apple? To know I have to. It was it was uh, two designers uh, out from Apple to to do the new website. Is WordPress. Mm -hmm. Because it is clear, navigation is here, and I have uh, elements here, and so on. It is not emotional, but structural. Mm -hmm. Tell me, things are here, are here, and I will look, take my odds to look at places. This one, this one is fully emotional. Mm -hmm. Give me a good impression. This is very good to, to give a good impression. This one wants to look technical. This one is trying to communicate on the emotion, but it's very difficult for people in Joomla to be on the emotion. So, okay, put some emotion, but facts, <laughs> because we're serious. You know. So, if, 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 you, if you would, uh, for the average user, if you had to put an order of structure, emotion, movement, I don't want to, to, okay. to answer the, this. What I just want to tell you is blur the web. When you do something, when you create something, blur it. And we, we have a little tool. It's free. You can use it where you want. It's a UX blur. You can have it now on the Chrome. And it, it's, it's soon coming on, the, on the, um, Firefox. Um, just a button, you click on it, and the website is blurred and great. And you can play with it. It's not a picture. You can use your website. Do it. And you will have this first second. You will know what is really seen on this first second. And think about it and work on it. Please do. And it helps you make, make a better web. Cool. Thank you. This is done. Thank you.